What's going on everybody? Bro back again today with another video. Today is not a vape review. It is a tech overview and sort of review. Okay. What I'm going to do is tell you about this. Pass along some information. Everybody in the industry knows I work on operating systems. The Inspire Freespire and uh, we do application software for Android. We do it for Mac OS X. We do it for Windows. We do it for Linux. Uh, and also other operating systems you guys have never heard of, so I'm not going to bore you with it. Okay. And uh, one of the things is, is that new operating system came on the market called Arca OS. Well, to understand Arca OS is to understand its base, where it came from, what's it descended from. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go through that right now. I'm going to tell you guys what Arca is what it's based on and a little bit of history behind the operating system okay that it's based off of alright let's get started alright Arc OS is based on OS2 okay so you're not old enough to know about OS2 or where it came from or what it was so what we're going to do is go ahead and tell you what OS2 was we're going to start at the beginning OS2 OS2 was a joint development agreement between IBM and Microsoft. It was supposed to be a better DOS than DOS, a better Windows than Windows, and um, it was supposed to be the future of computing. And uh, IBM and Microsoft eventually, as everything does in joint development agreements, it falls apart. It fell apart on them. Okay. Microsoft didn't want to have anything to do with IBM anymore on the project because IBM was too demanding and you know they basically had their own idea of where they wanted to see the software go. Microsoft went ahead and uh, also took the code that they developed for OS2 and they hired away Dave Cutler from Digital. Now full disclosure here I do know Dave. Great guy very smart does not get enough credit for what he does and uh, he's a super super genius dude anyway but anyway they hired Dave Cutler and Dave came on board with Microsoft and started creating something called OS2 NT which eventually became Windows NT and uh, because Dave came from the digital and uh, they brought in a lot of the VAX and VMS technology into Windows. But we're talking about OS2. So let's go ahead and talk about OS2. All right. Uh, IBM went forth and branched out their own version of OS2. And uh, some of you may remember OS2 Warp. And uh, if you're old enough to remember OS2 Warp, but uh, they created, oh, they decided to create their own version of OS2, and it was actually very popular for a while there. I had it, I ran it, and uh, actually, my mother's first computer, which was a compact, shipped with OS2, I want to say 2.3 or 3. I can't remember. Anyway, it was her, she, she had OS2. And she ran that machine forever. She actually ran that machine up until 2000. I think it was 2000 when we finally got her. No, it was 98 because we got her at Gateway 2000. That was my first computer gift to my mother. was actually that Gateway in 1998. But I still kept the machine because, you know, I used it for, well, as a precursor of forums. You know what I mean? Bulletins and everything else. So, yeah, great days, great days. But anyway, I digress. OS2, uh, like I said, was very popular, extremely, po extremely popular. And for a while there, it actually looked like it was going to overtake Windows, that it was going to be, it was going to be IBM's vision, which was the history, which was the future of computing. And uh, OS2 had a lot of momentum on it, behind it, and a lot of companies wrote a lot of software for it and everything. And uh, eventually, that popularity fizzled out, and it fizzled out because of two products, which was Windows 95 and Windows NT. Okay, 
Microsoft played their cards right. I mean, they had the application pr productivity software. They had developers that were actually bringing software to Windows. And uh, Windows 95 was, there was a lot of buzz around Windows 95 and around Windows NT. And so what ended up happening was the day before Windows 95 launched, IBM signed an agreement with Microsoft saying that they would ship Windows 95 with their computers. And that basically killed OS 2. And, uh, which did kill it off for good. Alright, but there's still a future there, but we're going to go over that. Alright, and, uh, but it didn't kill it off for good. And, but more of IBM's attention went away from from OS 2 and uh, went more into Windows. And that's when you saw Lotus Smart Suite ported over to Windows. And that was another part of the agreement was that IBM wasn't allowed to actually uh, distribute Lotus Smart Suite with, on any of their PCs. Customers actually had to buy it. So, but OS 2, IBM eventually quit developing it and then they went on to their they went on doing other things they stayed with AIX and PowerPC and then they just slowly let OS2 die out their version and this is where we get into Ecom Station Ecom Station is what it was called All right, Ecom Station was a version of OS2 that was done with IBM's blessing. Okay, and what it did was it added more uh, device drivers. It added more software, application software, and it brought OS2 up to date for modern computers with circa 2000, 2001. Okay, with modern software. Because at that point in time, OS2 updates and everything were pretty much killed. And so, Ecom Station, I ran Ecom Station for a while and it was not my favorite version of OS2. There were a lot of problems. I got a lot of installer hangs. Some machines it wouldn't work. Some machines it would work. And so, Ecom Station was that never did get super popular, and that was because not a lot of development dollars went into it. You had to have specific hardware, you had to have specific requirements, and it just sucked. Really, to be truthfully honest with you, it just sucked. And uh, there were a couple people that, like Arca Noe, who we're going to talk about in a minute. All right, Arca Noe created device drivers and tried to make the situation a little bit better, but it looked as if Ecom Station's future was not so bright and so and it wasn't because I mean I think they've actually quit developing Ecom Station altogether okay and so with Ecom Station out of the way they needed a new OS2 distribution and so they created Arca no way created Arca OS. Alright, now this is where we get interesting. Arca OS. There you go. And now we are back into Arca OS. Alright, and Arca OS, like I said, was created by Arca Noe and Louis Rosenthal. Talked to Louis before, Louis is a good guy. And um, he seems to know what he's doing. And I will have, by the way, that uh, link to that video, that he, the interview he did with Brian Lunduke. I will have that in the description below. I'll have that in the, in the description. So you guys can go back and look at that. But why did they do it? Well, the thing was, OS2, once again, was very popular back in the 90s. Extremely popular. Businesses ran it. I mean, it was used in banks. It was used on teller machines. Used by insurance companies. Hell, even NASA ran OS2 for a while. 
law enforcement offices used it, um, schools used it, it was just super, super popular. And uh, what's happening is a lot of those companies have not stopped using OS2. And why should they? I mean, it was like a freaking toaster oven. When you installed it on a machine, it just ran. There are some people that haven't had to reboot those systems in years. Okay. And, uh, yeah, factories used it too. I forgot factories. But, uh, what's happening is those computers are breaking down and they're going away. And, I mean, parts are not that easy to come by anymore. I mean, a computer from a computer from the '90s. Good luck trying to find a working system. Okay. No. No, not going to happen. But uh, yeah, it has to run on modern hardware. So what Lewis and them do is they've actually created, like I said, they put in their own bootloader, can boot from USB recognizes modern hardware so you can run OS2 on these newer systems that they're releasing today and uh, which is a good thing it's a good thing so now people when they need to replace these systems they can get an Arc OS license and they can go ahead and install Arc OS and run all their OS2 software, Windows software, DOS software, whatever they want to buy or whatever they want, whatever they're using not whatever you want to buy, whatever they're using. They can do that. So, yeah. Now, the question I get all the time is, is can I use Arc OS? Yes, you can. It's actually quite usable. They have the, they have modern builds of Firefox. They have an office suite. And they have a bunch of legacy applications that are still good today, which is funny. I mean, you know, they're still some of those applications are still good enough to use today. So just because it's old doesn't mean that you know it's useless. And they've done a lot of work to modernize it. Like it looks beautiful, as you guys just saw in that screenshot I just posted of it. Uh, it's a beautiful operating system. They did port a lot of the. Uh, Linux KDE icons over to it, so but yeah, it's usable. But go buy yourself a copy. It's only $129 for personal edition, $229 for a commercial, I think $999 for the S390 backup facility thing. Is it $999 or $1,099? $1,999. I think it's only $999. Um, so might go by there and check. But uh, yeah, the current version is 5.04. It is going to be in development for quite a while. I don't see Lewis or them quitting Arc OS anytime soon. I think it's going to, it's got a pretty bright future. And uh, hey, as an OS2 fanboy, I'm happy to see anything OS2 you know, brought up to the 21st century. People have been trying to get IBM to open source it forever, and IBM wouldn't do it. And I understand why, because I mean, they had legacy code that's owned by Microsoft and others, co other companies in there as well. And, uh, but yeah, it's one of those operating systems that has lasted throughout the years. Its popularity has lasted throughout the years. A lot of people want to run it, a lot of people still do run it. And, uh, yeah, I think it's cool. It's a nice trip down memory lane for me whenever I get a chance to run it. And, uh, you know, I like it. And Lewis and them, like I said, they've done a fantabulous job. So, yeah, well, I think that's enough for that. Like I said I have links in the description for... Arkanoe, Lewis's interview with Brian, and uh, the store down there. Oh, I also have a link to Brian's review down there as well. Alright, so, yeah. This is Roberto, you're awesome, and I will see you guys next time. Peace, love, adios, bye.